Building and launching apps has never been easier, especially with the introduction of agentic AI or vibe coding tools, and there's lots of them out there, but the big problem that I've experienced is that you have to start from a prompt and then hope that it translates your thoughts into an interface that you approve of. Well, Replit has just released their feature where you can actually import your Figma designs directly into Replit. It's pretty freaking good. Let's take a look. I have a ticket tracking app that I've been building inside of Figma. It's pretty simple, but I want my interface to look like this. And that's where Replit comes into play. We can actually start with this Figma file and then move into the actual AI vibe coding experience. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna take our design. First, let's jump over to Replit. I have a plan running here. And instead of just creating an app, which is gonna launch your basic kind of creation tool or your prompting tool, I could also choose a template to start from. These are great. These are great options. I love the idea here, but what I want to do instead is I want to import code or design. This is really cool because finally these vibe coding tools and Replit in particular is starting to focus on the actual design first. So you can see here, I can actually grab the Figma design here, click there, and it's going to ask me to bring in the Figma URL. I simply come back to Figma. I'm going to select the artboard that I'm working on, hit share, grab that link, come back over, paste it inside, choose whether I want it to be a public or a private application, and I'm gonna press go. I'm gonna import it from Figma. Now, you're gonna see Replit doing some work here, and what it's doing in the background is it's pulling in the design from Figma into Replit, but it's already starting to spin up my development environment. So it's not just pulling in a flat design, it's analyzing the design that's there, and it's assuming the functionality is gonna take place. It's gonna bring in all the dependencies, build the initial code base, and then lay out my interface for me. Replit has finished bringing in my project and you can see I have it here. I have some interactivity here. I have the ability to actually work with the responsive site here. So there's actual data being implemented. It's not an image, it's an actual website. It's an actual interactive web application. That's pretty cool right off the bat. Now it has some issues and what's cool is that we can go in and we can start prompting to fix those issues, both layout and functionality, but you can also just immediately start editing. So I can actually drop down here, hit the edit tool, I can come up here and I see I have some spacing issues. So why don't we just click on that and you can see it opens up the kind of like editing experience over here on the left-hand side. So I don't have to prompt right now. I can actually do design work directly here inside of the browser using Replit. So I have a font size, regular weight. I have some margins that are happening. So what we might want to do is just give a little bit of margin uh, here, like let's see left and right. I think that could be good. Let's bring that into something like 16 and let's do something like eight pixels, maybe another 16 pixels on the top. That feels pretty good. Save those changes, they're immediately applied. So I didn't have to go prompt, hope, cross my fingers, wait for it to make those changes and kind of understand me. It's just actually editing it in real time. Now, when I come back, you can see my application has been updated. It's rerun the development environment. And if I want to, if I'm happy with it right here, I can simply go up and press deploy and it'll give me the options to deploy my project. You can see it's opened up the deployment tab. I have the console available to me and my preview. So this is like a true blue IDE. I can actually come in here and I can start coding if I want to, or I can just stick with Agentic AI. Over on the left-hand side, we can always go back home if we want. You can actually open up all the files and you can see everything that's happening. You can see the component JSON, the Tailwind config. We can jump into the client and look at all the individual assets that are here. So it's pulling all of those in and I can hide them away. Now I'm not gonna get into it in this video, but Replit has a slew of other tools that you can use. You jump down here, you can see on the left-hand side, I have have a bunch of tools available to me. I'm currently previewing my app. I have the console open. I can also create databases right here. That means I'm not gonna depend on third-party tools for databases. It can all happen directly here inside of my environment. Deployments are currently open, but I have, a, again, a whole slew of other tools like object storage and key value storage. Security scanner, which is a super big deal because one of the biggest complaints about vibe coding applications right now is that they're not secure. But Replit has a built-in security scanner to identify any sort of issues with your application. And so there are tons of tools here that you can browse, but for me, I really just wanna get my design looking the way that it needs to look. So let's come in here and take a look. I'm not a big fan of these hovers here. 
I need to be able to click on each of these individual rows to actually see the ticket with the details there. And I need to be able to click here and uh, or the plus button or this entire row to start creating a brand new ticket. So why don't we first create the ticketing modal that's gonna pop up when we click on any one of these individual rows. I can simply address the individual rows here. So I'm selecting card content. I could go in and do some visual editing, but I wanna actually message my agent. When a user clicks a row, a modal should open that displays the ticket information, including, uh, what should it include? Uh, title, description, ID, and tracking info. And it has finished. You'll notice here, it went through a slew of commands. It took my prompt here, and it said it, it was gonna implement the modal, and it started editing the different files. It needed to create a proper task schema, which it did. Then it updated the structure of those files, and then it completed by making sure that all the JSX is working accordingly, so those task rows are clickable, and the functionality is now there. It even added some of these handy-dandy uh, cards or chips here to let me know the priority. It thought of some functionality that I didn't think of, and I'm kind of appreciative of it. So let's click on any one of those rows. You can see there it is, my ticket. It says, man, here's the title of it, the ID of it, the description, who it's assigned to, what project it's a part of, and the created and last updated details. That is pretty freaking good for some task tracking and bug tracking application stuff. Now, of course, if I don't like what it's implemented, I could always roll back to a previous version that's very, very easy to do. And Replit allows me to load a preview to see what that is, but I like the direction we're moving. So let's keep moving in this direction. We can now see the different tickets that we have. We can click on those to get the details. All of those are individually different. So it has different data we're already running inside of it without even setting up the database. It's holding on to some local information for me, which is great. I need to be able to click on this new row. So let's go ahead and edit this, grab this entire row, and let's prompt it again and just say, this row should allow the user when clicked to add uh, a new task. This will open the modal and allow for live content editing with a submission button to add it to the current list of tickets, just like that. Let's go ahead and run that command and see what Replit comes back with for us. Now we have a new version. I can actually hover over and see the add new row is interactive. Click on that and I get the modal that would allow me to add a test ticket and it's part of, let's change the project here, Jesse's project, and let's assign it to me. And let's give it a low priority. The status is currently open. And uh, we'll just say this is big. And we'll add that task and see down here, we immediately have our test ticket. We can open that up and uh, it has all of our information inside. But now we have another problem is that we click on any of these individual elements and there's no functionality. There's no interactivity here. I can't close the ticket. I can't edit details on the ticket. That's gonna be our next step. Simply go back to Replit with the modal exposed. I'm gonna come in and just grab this entire dialogue content box here and I'm gonna give it my new prompt. Click that, let it go, and see what happens. So I went through it, added a few fixes here. You can see that uh, we can actually go in and click on one of our elements. I moved the location of our edit button, click on that, and now we have our ticket. We moved uh, all the errors that we had up here of buttons in our layout. We can change things here, maybe assign this to something else and put this into a completed status. So fix that bug mate, 
now shows that it has been completed. You can see that uh, it's showing all the content being updated on the fly. And uh, it's amazing because it went through and updated all these files. You can actually pull any of the files here. So like the index CSX or the main.tsx, you can see all of those here. You can come in and manually actually update and change all of those if you want. So maybe if I find that the, uh, the font is a little bit too big, we could drop down to like something like 20 pixels there and come back and see that reflected. So now you actually have access to an AI agent that's going to update your design, all the functionality, tie into a database. You can actually manually dive in. I can upload this to a GitHub repository or simply deploy this to my local environment. So you can see I just deployed a version of this. It's now living at a particular domain. I can send a QR code off and it looks a little something like this. Still gotta work out some of the responsiveness of it, but I can actually send the link to this URL to my developers, to stakeholders, to any clients I'm working with. And I have more than just a Figma prototype. In about 10 minutes, I have a working actual prototype that can be taken from here brought over to GitHub, and they have the start of their code base and their project ready to go. This is where the power really lies as a web designer, digital product designer, that we no longer have to hand off these static kind of assets or presentations of pixels. Instead, we implement, we put into play the design and start to work out some of that functionality. And the benefits of this is that you don't have to hire developers, look for offshore teams. You don't have to learn how to code yourself. You can just create everything with a tool like Replit in about one day and the value that you can offer as a designer, 10 X's, 100 X's by far. There are a lot of these vibe coding agentic AI tools out there, but Replit seems very, very dedicated to designers like us being able to implement in something more than just a prototype, but an MVP of an actual product. And so for that, man, Replit has a big two thumbs up from me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. Hope you have an amazing week, and we'll see you in the next one.